damn it, how long have we been doing this show? The Wrestling Life. Hey everybody, it's the Wrestling Life. It's episode 344. It's our SummerSlam preview show. I'm Ethan. And I'm Liam. Liam, we have so much to talk about this week. And as always, so many things that we can't talk about on the first and only wrestling podcast. WWE SummerSlam coming up this weekend. AEW had their 200th edition of Dynamite this week. They were very, they love to congratulate themselves. Sort of like Saturday Night Live. There's <laughs> never, there's never uh, an occasion to celebrate themselves that Saturday Night Live won't take. The 40th anniversary, the 45th anniversary, the 35th anniversary, the thousandth episode, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> AEW Dynamite, very much the same. Um, we'll get to that in a bit. Meanwhile, uh, WWE had their uh, quarterly earnings call uh, this week, and um, it came up just like uh, offhand. They were like, uh, yep, uh, Vince McMahon, um, he was served with a search warrant and uh, a subpoena. Uh, grand jury subpoena uh, in July. And uh, yeah, and then a few days later, he underwent uh, major spinal surgery. <laughs> and uh, someone asked Nick Khan, well, what do you think about this? He's like, ah, no comment. <laughs> Nick Khan, the most verbose man you've ever met, has nothing to say about, uh, about WWE's uh, executive chairman, being served with a search warrant and a subpoena to testify before a grand jury. So, um, specifics on this are still a little bit light, mm -hmm. but it seems the federal government is still investigating Vince and his uh, hush money payments. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, other than that, nothing to see here. <laughs> I just. I just love that the second the second the feds came knocking again for Vincent McMahon, he's he's getting that neck brace out. Yeah. He's ready. It's his it's a security blanket. And it, it kind of just paints it allows me to paint a picture of Vince having like zero uh good night's sleep since nineteen ninety four, as he just imagines that one day that shoe's gonna drop and and the federal government was going to come knocking at his door again to to finally finish the job. Yes. So, thirty years on now, the federal government is back to get <laughs> fence. That's right. Uh, Nick, Uncle Nick, did drive home that um, they're respecting Vince's privacy during this time. <laughs> he also noted that Vince is a good family man. <laughs> He uh he asked everyone not to blame Vince. <laughs> so any uh any insight, any ideas, any it's probably not good if we execute a search warrant. It means we're looking for uh, uh DNA, something of that nature. Yeah, seems <laughs> Seems like there there's something specific, and uh, you know when you get when you get subpoenaed for a grand jury, it's they don't plan they don't do that if they don't plan on bringing charges. So uh, I am sure we will be hearing more about this, and uh, you know Nick uh, Nick Khan writes runs a pretty tight ship up there, so I don't think he's worried. It's basically his company now, anyway. So. Uh, you know, he just we just we just keep the ball rolling, and uh, yeah, doesn't <laughs> it, it feels like it feels like Vince is uh is gonna have a trial of his life part two. Wonder how this will fit into the scripted Netflix series about his life. <laughs> Yikes, is Bischoff Hervey Entertainment producing that. Oh, I mean, 
those two had a falling out. I know. I just I know you're gonna be shocked. I just want to I I'm aware. I just I just I just like when Eric talks about how he's he's not he's not really a wrestling guy, he's a, he's a television producer. Yes. Yes. Noted truth teller Eric Bischoff. <laughs> so we'll see what happens with Vince. It's probably not gonna work out too well, but we'll see. He's also had major spinal surgery. I don't know what that means. I think he, <laughs> think he went in with the uh, the Laser Spine Institute that uh, Hogan sued. Uh, could be. Could be. We'll see. And not looking good for uh, for Uncle Vince either. But anyway. WWE's uh, third biggest show of the year coming up this weekend. And um, it's a uh, it's a kind of a light card for the mm. third biggest show of the year. Eight matches announced to this point, including the Slim Jim SummerSlam Battle Royal Nick Khan Spectacular. There will be a twenty man Battle Royal. Is there really? They're firing back up the uh, the Slim Jim sponsorship with WWE. That's right. The uh, I believe that it was referred to in the press release as the most lucrative sponsorship deal in WWE history. Yeah. So mm. here's who we know is in the Slim Jim SummerSlam Battle Royal. Uh, LA Knight. Yeah. Sheamus. Champa. Nakamura. Otis. Chad Gable. Wow, wow, wow. All the stars are in fact here. Great. I hope no word on what's at stake in the Slim Jim Battle Royal. The pride. I hope there's a trophy. <laughs> Just it's a giant stick of meat. <laughs> of a meat like substance. Whew. Tell you what, LA Knight between this, the Mountain Dew match, this guy's uh he's he's making uh making uh, junk food sponsored wrestling matches his uh his speciality here. Yeah. It's something. Guys got to eat. Yeah. Sure. I, I do enjoy Slim Jims. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I mean, I haven't had one since I was in my late teens, I think. But I I, I remember thinking they were they were pretty cool. <laughs> I'm sending the recording of this to the Slim Jim people, <laughs> the Conagra Foods people. <laughs> Tell you what, I don't know if you've been in a convenience store lately, but all the convenience stores around here have a like a Macho Man bust on the counters right now, hmm. full full of Slim Jims. I gotta get one of those. Oof. I have hey. got to get one of those. That's I bet. I bet you can. Uh, whenever this promotion's up, you just you know slip the kid on the on the desk 5 bucks or something you bet you could bet you could take one home i uh, i'm hoping i'm hoping all right back to SummerSlam here uh Ronda Rousey is wrestling Shayna Baszler in an MMA rules match fascinating apparently uh, Ronda is on her way back to the UFC i don't know why <laughs> like ha- Does she need money i don't think so I wouldn't think she would ever have to work again if she didn't want to. Mm -hmm. And yet uh, she's going to go back and she's going to get the Chris Cyborg deal where they build a division just for her and they feed her tomato cans, I guess. Um, Because there's really not a whole lot of good 145 pound female fighters. And uh, that's the division that they're going to put around it in. So good for her. Sure. Hell of a gig if you can get it. Sure. And to to uh to the ladies' credit, I thought the video packages they produce for her, while uh, while very dramatic, <laughs> full of acting, full of it, full of those NXT acting classes paying off for Shayna. Um, you know, pretty solid. They were they were trying to invoke genuine emotion, um, and make you care about this as like two long term best friends that are you know this is something of a tragedy that it's come to this, which, you know, it's, it's, it's still a feud that started like three weeks ago. So you can't really feel that way, but Hey, they gave it, they gave it their best shot. It is, it is something. 
So there's that. Um, Gunther will be defending the Intercontinental title against uh, Drew McIntyre. And uh, Gunther is just a few days short of the uh, the record for the longest Intercontinental title reign of all time. So I doubt he is losing to Drew here. And um, unless Drew is re-signed, I don't know. I think this is interesting because they haven't really announced any big contracts since they announced the merger. Mm-hmm. And they're uh, they've run a couple of uh, they brought in a, a recruiting class at the PC, but uh, all of that was set in motion before the murder talks. So and we'll have to see. I don't have a sense. Drew, here's the thing I know about Drew McIntyre. <laughs> he loves talking to the dirt sheets. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He loves getting his narrative out there. And so far, his narrative has been, uh, well, uh, we're on good terms, but I have not agreed to a new contract with WWE. So I don't anticipate that he'll be buried here, but a good throw winning this seems like a slam dunk. Yeah, I feel like he's in a weird spot. I mean, he's his he was up and down, obviously, with Vince in, in and out of Vince's favor for the past decade anyway, but he's really not a, I mean, I guess Paul did bring him back for NXT, but he doesn't really feel like a Paul guy. Sure. And so I, I could see maybe, uh, yeah. In and in a time when, when money's tight and they're not really looking to spend big bucks for him to be a little disappointed. I think he, he mentioned in I forget it was BT Sport or one of those one of those sites that he gave an interview to. He was like, "Yeah, there was some smoke to some of it, but we're we're okay." Anyway, I'm going to wrestle on SummerSlam. Like it was very noncommittal. He hasn't been on many Raws since <laughs> since returning or being drafted over the over the summer. So they seem to be using him sparingly as well. So I don't know. Just yeah, it's it's I I see I don't see a scenario where. They beat Gunther this close to him, uh, breaking the record. But uh, yeah, I just I I don't see Drew winning it. But how how Gunther keeps the belt perhaps will indicate uh, how they see Drew and how their current negotiations are going. Sure. Ricochet and Logan Paul have vowed about three dozen times to have the most viral match mm-hmm. in the history of world wrestling entertainment. And uh, people, uh, people, people are going to like the flips um, and uh, Ricochet's going to, going to lose. Mm-hmm. Everybody wins. Except yeah, Ricochet. I mean... <laughs> but what else is now? They did an angle on the uh, the go home raw here where Logan Paul was like, you know, Ricochet, you date the ring announcer, and I am gonna make your girlfriend say my name after I win the match. <laughs> and it's like, well, that's definitely gonna happen. So sucks to be Ricochet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, it's it's unfortunate. Ricochet is not a uh, what's what's the social media megastar as uh, as yes. I- Irish announcer lets us know every yes. uh, seven and a half seconds. Yes, Rover the announcer, who uh, is <laughs> always desperately out of breath. <laughs> he's, he's apparently a a legitimate soccer announcer of some reputation. Hmm. Which is just fascinating to me because he's terrible. <laughs> it's absolutely terrible. Yeah, he's look. I can't imagine. I mean, he probably has a better co uh, co announcer in soccer. I would have to think. But uh, yeah, I can't. I can't imagine that's great to listen to. Well. Hopefully they have the most viral match <laughs> in WWE history. 
Oh, let's see what else is going on at SummerSlam. Asuka will defend the WWE Women's Championship against Charlotte Flair and Bianca Belair in a three way. These three get about uh, 90 seconds, give or take, to do their <laughs> angles every week on, on Friday Night SmackDown. Mm-hmm. And um, unclear to me um, who who's going to win this, who's the baby face. Uh, Asuka, we know, is the heel. Asuka, um, with her very sensible haircut and sensible slacks <laughs> um, and her blue mist. I, I don't know. The the bill for this has not lit my world on fire. Yeah, I I like you said, they're not getting a lot of time. You would think just based on it being three of the most pushed female acts over the past five to ten years, you would think maybe they would uh put some steam behind it. But uh I mean this is kind of an aside, but it's um just doesn't seem to be a whole lot of focus on the uh on the women's division at the moment and certainly not on SmackDown because you mentioned they don't get much time. And then a lot of times they're sharing their time with uh, whatever little bits that EO and, and Bailey and, and Shotzi are doing as well. So they're cramming a whole lot into not very much time because, because well, Hey, you know, <laughs> 40 minutes of this show is going to be Roman Reigns' entrances and a video package. So you gotta you gotta cut time where you can, I guess. I guess I don't, I I don't know. I I feel like this this is going to be a uh, this is going to be a three and a half four hour show anyway. Mm-hmm. I think they were uh, they were pretty good in the uh, the beginning of the Paul era of creative of trying to keep these shows around two and a half three hours. Mm-hmm. And then uh, the more the old man got back in there, the uh, the longer these shows got. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and we're back to four hour pay per view cards once a month. And uh, we'll see how this goes. We'll see how long this one is. <laughs> That's right. And hey, the longer it is, uh, more ads you can run. Yes, more sponsored segments you can uh, you can add in. So you know you know Nick loves that. He does. He does. He does. He does. Uh, World Heavyweight Championship. Well, I'm going to talk about more about the women's booking in a minute because uh, sure. I got a I got a scoop. <laughs> <laughs> I got a scoop this week, and I never get. I went out and got the scoop on my own. But uh, Seth Rollins versus Finn Balor for the World Heavyweight Championship. Um, Balor wants a rematch, even though he lost. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think one or two title matches already. And uh, he's uh, he wants a match just because, and uh, Seth says sure. So they get to to wrap their SummerSlam uh, seven year SummerSlam story. Um, Judgment Day hottest act on Raw in spite of themselves somehow. Senor Money in the Bank, why isn't it Senor Dinero and La Banco or whatever instead of? <laughs> Senor money in the bank. Uh, anyway, um, Rhea, arguably their hottest superstar in terms of crowd reaction. Um, not on the show. Mm-hmm. Dirty Dom, not on the show. But Finn Balor gets another world heavyweight title match. I don't get it. I don't get it. People love singing Seth's song. They'll be really into it. Yeah, it'll be uh, it'll probably be a solid match. And I mean, you can work at it as a work it into the uh, or use it as a backdrop to the judgment day potential breakup. Is is Damien going to cash in on Finn? Is he, would he cash in on Seth? Would he cash in in the middle of the match and make it a three way? So there's, I guess there's, there's some, there's some drama there. And like, and like we said recently, I think Finn's, Finn's doing his best. As you pointed out, it's hard to get people excited about a match when you've already seen it with a clean finish, but um, you know, everybody's, everybody's trying their hardest to make it work and yeah, they're, they're doing it again. Cool. Cody Rose, Brock Lesnar three. (laughs) 
They've done a lot of segments where uh, Brock Lesnar has gotten heat on Cody Rhodes in building mm-hmm. to this mm-hmm. match. I assume Brock is putting Cody over. But who knows what the uh, the old man in the neck brace is going to uh, decide <laughs> the day of the show. It's uh, it's never a bad idea to bet that uh, Brock wins with the F5. But uh, yes, you would think based on the fact that the last time they wrestled, Cody passed out to an arm bar. <laughs> um, maybe, maybe, and then he's gotten his ass kicked in like every subsequent angle they've done that. Yes, he should probably just get a big clean win here. Um, but we'll see. And then a tribal combat match for the, Universal Championship and uh, the designation of Tribal Chief between Roman Reigns and Jey Uso. Um, This is the acting match. This is uh, Mm a dramatic pause match. Shakespeare in the Park. Their pay-per-views are usually really good. And everything with the bloodline has been fantastic. I assume this will be more of that. But um, um, this is this is the acting match. So yeah, and I feel like with the, it'll always be the focus is assuming Jay isn't winning the title here, which seems like a pretty safe assumption. Um, you just go like, all right, what's next? Who's going to come out at the end of the show? Does Jimmy come back? Do you know what? What do they set up for for Roman to do after this show? To me, it feels like. Well, Jimmy's going to come back because, I mean, he took like a urinage on the announce table and uh, somehow he's been out of action for six weeks because of it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like, what kind of hospitalization angle? Uh, I mean, they, I know they did this. They did this with Heyman last year and like nobody really noticed like Brock put Heyman through the announce table and mm-hmm. Heyman missed like a month of tv after and uh it was like well why is where's him and it's like he's selling the injury it's like <laughs> a month <laughs> a month for an f5 through the announce table okay right and but, for Heyman, maybe that's fine but for an active wrestler who's probably been put through the announce table like 15 times in the in his career uh seems a little odd yeah it's a little much that's the SummerSlam card as of now. And uh, you'll notice no Becky Lynch versus Trish Stratus on this show. And mm-hmm. at the beginning of the summer, I uh, I was like, well, I guess I got to go to the Detroit this summer. <laughs> City I've never been to. But uh, they're like two of my six favorite all-time wrestlers are going to wrestle each other. And I don't know how many more of these either one of them has in them. Um I probably got to go to that. And then here we were uh, the week of the show. And they still hadn't announced uh, Trish versus Becky for SummerSlam. And then I heard they are doing uh, the match on Raw this week. And it's like, well, that's odd. And then uh, it's like, well, it's probably just the angle to set up the real match at SummerSlam. And then I asked someone in the uh, the stand community, the <laughs> Becky Lynch stand community, who would know? I asked them, I'm like, uh, what's going on? And they're like, this match is not happening at SummerSlam. And everyone is pissed about it. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> well... I guess we'll see. And then sure enough, later on the show, Adam Pierce is like, you know what? This match is not happening at SummerSlam. It is happening. Well, technically, they did the rematch on Raw, and it went five seconds. And can Zoe Stark cause the DQ right away. Mm-hmm. And then Adam Pierce goes, well, we're making this match for uh, Monday, August the 14th in Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada. What? <laughs> well, I'm certainly not going to Winnipeg. <laughs> so I guess if you enjoy 
uh, Becky Lynch or Trish Stratus wrestling matches, um, you're out of luck. And uh, they don't fit uh, the current vision for SummerSlam, which includes a Slim Jim SummerSlam <laughs> Battle Royal. Well, I don't know. If... <laughs> I don't know. Look, I mean, in all seriousness, yes, every everyone involved has a right to be a little bit upset about this. I know I'm sure they're very upset. I know Rhea was, uh, I guess, making some social media posts this week with some snide comments about being left off the show because they just kind of started doing an angle with her and Raquel and they're not having a match on the show either. Um, and that being said, if you if you're looking at the reason it's like, well, that Slim Jim Battle Royal is making them a lot more money <laughs> than uh, than than Becky versus Trish would. And they I think they probably know that it would be maybe they think they weighed the bad PR and thought, well, if we put them on SummerSlam and give them five minutes, people will be more mad about that than if we let them go, you know. 12 on a on a raw in a couple weeks like people will be less upset with that than if we threw them on SummerSlam for their big grudge match and they got five minutes in between ads for dasani water and cinnamon toast crunch maybe so maybe that is in fact the calculus uh i'm very displeased about it as well just just not happy at all yeah feels like it feels like with if people are going to start publicly saying stuff about it, it's going to get turned into an angle eventually. <laughs> um, but maybe not. I don't know. I don't know. I just, when I saw Rhea posting about it, I was like, ah, it's that's that, that makes me feel like maybe it'll become like an angle where they'll, uh, they'll let Becky do a, a pipe bomb about how the women don't get enough time or something. And, and we'll we'll do some kind of reset for the division because yeah, as of now, as we just talked about, the matches on this show aren't getting a ton of time to promote themselves, and uh, then several other matches were left off. So feels like something's got to give there, or uh, you just have a lot of unhappy people. And and uh, you know, as mentioned, Rhea Rhea gets tons of TV time, but she's uh, you know that's her work as a a manager and seconding all the uh, all the boys feuds so um it's it's got to feel probably a little bit strange she's been champion since wrestlemania and i can't remember her defending that belt a single time i'm sure she has but uh, i can't really remember it yeah she hasn't really had a program since uh, since winning the title five, almost five months ago so there's mm-hmm. that AEW, on the other hand oh one more thing i have a surprise for you Oh, uh oh. I watched the NXT pay per view from uh, this, this past Sunday. Wow. First of all, it feels like that was six weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> it was only five days ago. Uh, what did you think of uh, everyone? Gable Steveson, <laughs> Tiffany Stratton, Baron Corbin, beautiful Baron Corbin. Beautiful Baron. It's good to see Baron again. Hadn't seen him have a one and a half star match in about. <laughs> In about six months, it was nice to see him back, uh, yeah. just doing what Tiff- he does best. <laughs> Tiffany going to the Tiffy top rope and hitting the uh, the prettiest moonsault ever. Yeah, um, that match felt like a victim of bad agenting to me, in the sense that they were trying to have Tiffany do like a lot of power stuff, and then the finish is she has a Boston crab hooked in for like five minutes. And uh, and she got tired and maybe was also trying to sell her one arm or whatever, but she kept dropping Thea Hill's legs completely. Yeah. <laughs> and then having to pick them up. So maybe that's more of a timing and uh, agenting issue. But yeah, I mean, I would say stars of the show for me. Uh, I thought Roxanne Perez and uh, what's what's B Priestley's <laughs> NXT name? Blair Davenport. You know, like when you look at be priestly Blair Davenport. Like she's the most British woman you've ever seen. And therefore Certainly. her name should, she should have the most British name imaginable, which is of course be priestly. <laughs> <laughs> so 
I'm a li- I was a little bit uh, taken aback by that, but no, I thought they had a, a pretty fun hardcore match. R- Rock, uh, you know, Roxanne's great. Like she should. I mean, again, we just talked about how none of the women that are currently on the main roster, even their biggest stars, get time. So yeah, I guess I'm not really rooting for her to get called up either, because at least they get to do stuff and do storylines on NXT every week, even if they're kind of Disney Channel based on the video packaging. Um, yeah. They get to do stuff. So, yeah. But I like, I thought that was fun. And then uh, the main event, it was uh, Carmelo Hayes and uh, uh, Dragonoff. And that was, that was really good um, as well. So, some good wrestling. You see a lot of potential. You see, I was able to, having not really watched week to week NXT in like years. I'd be like, okay, I see why all of these people are on TV. Like, I see why all these are the people that are like being picked as the people to be on this television show every week. So, you know, a good solid time, I thought. Announcing's terrible, but, uh, you know, it's terrible on Raw, too. So, yes. Yeah, the announcing is like sets, sets new standards for terrible <laughs> on NXT every week. Um, for some reason, when you were talking about B. Priestley's name, I thought you were going to say she needs to have the most British name of all time, Angela Lansbury. <laughs> but, but B. Priestley is just like one notch off of Angela Lansbury. Agreed. Agreed. A- ALBP. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Angela Lansbury, NXT superstar. Do we have a picture of Paul McCartney? Anywho. Uh, so Liam watched NXT. That's nice. And uh, AEW had their 200 Dynamite this week. We have an all-in main event announced. The Elite have re-signed with the company. I guess let's talk about the Elite re-signing first. I was rooting for chaos. I was rooting for whatever the funniest outcome would be, which to me would be them going to uh, WWE and making a i don't know i i I don't know make them do a year and a half in nxt (laughs) something along those lines and uh and then and then anyway so i guess mm, there were reports this week from people that would probably know that old hanger and kenny and the Bucks made a pact that they were going to ne- negotiate together, like the uh, the cast of Friends, mm-hmm. and uh, or the Click, except they didn't until they really. didn't, <laughs> right? They didn't do that, but okay, uh, yeah. So they they just uh, AEW just randomly announced their re-signing on a Wednesday afternoon before the two hundred Dynamite. If I were them, ultimately, I think this is the best thing for both for both parties. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, like, I think for AEW, whether or not it's it like we've talked about for for a year, <laughs> we know who Tony picked, right? We know he picked Punk overall, but I think there would be. We talk about PR black eyes. If the elite left all elite wrestling, if all of the founding guys of your company left within a couple of years and all went to join WWE, that looks really bad. So yeah, you should probably, even if they aren't proving to be the television ratings draws that some of the other guys you have are, uh, I think they're still they're important to uh, the overall vibes and pro wrestling in 2023 is like 95 percent vibes. Uh, so I think, yes, I think having having the elite on your show is good if you're a company that was built by them, um, which this this was to an extent. And then, yeah, if you're the elite schedule in WWE is probably worse for you. And then if you're in a tag team. They don't care about tag teams. So it's like, yeah, Ken, Kenny, I think I think Kenny could have had a really, really good WWE career um, if he went and maybe he still will someday. But 
Um, yeah, I think overall, if they were determined that they were all going to stay together, then yes, it was probably best for them to stay, uh, stay where they, are. um, they were featured on the two letters dynamite. Um, about to talk about the great champions of women's wrestling that AEW are. They headlined their 200th, 200th Dynamite with Hikaru Shida winning the women's title from Tony Storm. Mm-hmm. Tony Storm had boo boo face. <laughs> she had job face on. She did a job. That's interesting. Still have yet to meet a wrestling company that can effectively monetize Tony Storm, which is just the most maddening thing in my life. <laughs> However, uh, good for Sheeta. And they set up the all in main event, which will be uh, MJF versus Adam Cole, who are now bro baby faces. They are the bro cha shows. And um, yeah, so they're they're marching towards their two pay-per-views that they have coming up in the next 30 days. And uh, what do you think of Dynamite 200? What do you think of Sheeta getting the women's title back? What do you think of Adam Cole and MJF wrestling one another? What do you think of the cuckold Roderick Strong? Who's turning on who? Could Roddy look like a bigger dweeb every week with his stupid neck brace on and his tiny polo shirts and his ill-fitting dad jeans? And yeah, give me some thoughts. Oh, man. Um well, first, let me just say yes. <laughs> Friendship Cuck, uh, Roderick Strong, one of my favorite characters in pro wrestling at the moment. He's just, <laughs> they've taken everything that you would say ro- that makes Roderick Strong a good wrestling performer. That is his wrestling, uh, you know, his athleticism, his, his, his technical ability. He has kind of a, he has a charisma when he's wrestling that I don't think has ever translated to his interviews. It would be fair to say. I think that's very kind. Yes. <laughs> um, you know, and uh, they've taken all that away from him. And now he just walks around in a, <laughs> in a neck brace and he, he get the, his face turns real red. <laughs> yes. And he, as he gets just more impotently a- uh, angry every week at being friendship cut by uh by mjf it's it's so funny it's not i wouldn't be a good use of it's not how i would use roderick strong if i was gonna hire him but uh it's funny so i kind of uh i kind of love it in that way um uh elsewhere on on the show as mentioned yeah i i really liked the main event um i'm uh, i'm a big fan of of sheeta's work I have been for a long time um and there's uh, there's there's poetry, I think, in one, it was, as you mentioned, it's, it was this, it's not an anniversary, it was the 200th episode of Dynamite, so you ended it with, uh, you know, a title change, and it's uh, someone that's been there the whole time, getting getting a nice moment, and of course, as they repeatedly talked about on commentary, building this up, building up her win, uh, she... <laughs> never got to wrestle as the champion in front of fans before. And now she's going to go probably defend that belt in front of 80,000 people. So that's pretty cool. Um, good, good for her. She's someone that they throw out there in front of cold crowds a lot. And then by the end, the crowds aren't so cold and that's uh, that's a pretty invaluable skill. Uh, yeah. Feel for Tony storm on the other end, because as mentioned, uh, you know, people seem to like her seem to be, into her as a baby face and then uh uh, uh because Soraya is is dog shit, uh she had to turn uh Tony had to turn heel um and uh that's not Tony's fault <laughs> no but uh yeah they couldn't have couldn't have put Sheeta over stronger and kicked out of like two pile drivers including the one where she got blinded by the uh spray paint or whatever so Pretty definitive win, so we'll see what happens to this little uh, this little outcast group for probably the second time. It feels like Tony didn't really get a fair chance, maybe to really spread her spread her wings, get to do a lot as uh, as champion. But uh, you know, there's always the next time that somebody gets hurt that uh, they have to panic and throw the belt back on her. So you know. <laughs> Good. Uh, I'm sure. I'm sure her time will come eventually. She, she may get a rematch at Wembley. 
just process of elimination. Yeah, I mean, it seems pretty clear Jamie Hayter's not going to be back for that show. Um, yeah, I would think I would think that makes that could that could make sense as a match, or maybe you do a maybe you do a multi woman match and you get like Britt and and uh, and Soraya and Ruby involved as well. But yeah, that's I'm sure she'll be in a in a prominent spot on that show in one of her many hometowns. Um, <laughs> that's right. Tony is from Australia. And also New Zealand Mm -hmm. and also Manchester (laughs) and uh, also uh, Florida. (laughs) So four very, very many, many, many hometowns. Uh, You asked me about something else, too. (laughs) Probably, but um, it could be a number of (laughs) thousands of things. Um, let's see. We talked about the elite. We talked about the the all in main event, oh. and we talked about Roddy getting cocked, but yes. we didn't really necessarily <laughs> talk about. We talked about the highlights, but <laughs> yeah, they have they have a they have a they have a main event match for their stadium show now, and it's MJF and Adam Cole, which yeah. uh, you know, I think. I mean, I mean, CM Punk set on Collision. He's going to Wembley, so and he's mm-hmm. defending a real world title now. His he's he's defending his version of the world title over on the, the with the colliders on Saturday night, <laughs> while the uh, the kaboomers have the, the real title on Wednesdays. So there's an angle here that has to be resolved at some point. Yeah, I assume maybe the ending of All Out is I would assume MJF is retaining, and then maybe old Phil comes out to confront him, and you set that up for the Chicago show the following weekend. Um, that's, that's kind of my inkling, uh, but we'll see. Yeah. People are, people are super into MJF and Adam Cole. I don't know what the original plan was when you did the odd couple tag team, but, uh, but people, people love these guys together. I like, like I've said, it was, it's not, it's not what I would do with a world champion, but, uh, it would be uh, sticking your head in the sand to say that it hasn't worked and that it hasn't resulted in like increased interest as well. Cause you can like the collision number with them wrestling FTR was way up and they did, I think they did a pretty solid number for dynamite again this week. So like people are, people are really into the MJF Adam Cole thing. Um, if I were them at this point, just because we've seen, MJF do the fake phony baby face turn only to turn back heel like seemingly nine times <laughs> since AEW was uh, first incepted. So I would perhaps say that, hey, maybe you have it turn out that it's a plot and uh, and Adam Cole and Roddy. And uh, based on that, at the end of this week's segment, we've, we've introduced Matt Taven and Mike Bennett into the storyline as well. Uh, on the periphery <laughs> so perhaps adam cole will reform the kingdom as a heel group and uh and turn on and turn on mjf if if oh, okay I, I forgot about that <laughs> i forgot about that uh, you also have you, you have kyle o'reilly floating around out there kind of in the zeitgeist also and mm-hmm. we haven't heard a medical update on him but you would think he'd be about ready to come back from having his neck fused mm-hmm. um i don't i don't know the problem is everyone in this in this story now is better better off being a heel at the end of it <laughs> it's like unless we end up with like a super group of uh the kingdom mjf and uh the undisputed era guys uh somebody is got to be a baby face at the end of this <laughs> right seems less than ideal yeah like i said i, th- I think just for i i've been pr- i feel like the edge lord heel mjf is pretty long in the tooth people seem like they want to cheer him right now so even if you end up turning him back six months from now i feel like if you're going to turn one of these guys heel soon then i think i would probably turn cole before i would turn him and maybe which again maybe that's ridiculous because you just built the whole like reality show around 
making Adam Cole the biggest baby face in the world. So maybe maybe you just shouldn't turn either of them. I don't know. At least at least for right now. Um, we've largely had a lot of positive things to say about AEW here. <laughs> so I would like to bring that down and just say that uh, the Jungle Boy, Jack Perry, is feuding with ECW, a promotion that went out of business 22 years ago. Mm-hmm. Almost 23 years ago. And um, I thought he was going to wrestle Jerry Lynn this week. And then Jerry Lynn's like, nah, I got a bad neck. I can't fight, but Rob Van Dam can fight you. And uh, Rob Van Dam wrestling, getting get a payday on Dynamite next week is cool. And I think that's fine. I don't know why Jungle Jack is feuding with ECW. It's very strange. Yeah, I feel like it it changed because at first it was about him, you know, taking this belt from Hook. And so theoretically, it should be Hook on the comeback trail to defend his and, and his dad's honor. But now it's been sidetracked with Jerry Lynn cutting promos about, you know, respecting the legacy of ECW, a company that went out of business when uh, Jack Perry and Hook were like two and five years old, respectively. Um, And uh, and that seems like a wrong turn to take. Like, I think uh, if you make this just a personal thing where Hook's standing up for for his family and his dad, that works. That's good enough. And I get it, it can still be that. I just feel like it's gotten, it's just gotten sidetracked with ECW nostalgia. And I understand using the FTW belt at all, you could argue, is ECW nostalgia in and of itself. But um, it's also been a thing on AEW television for a few years now where you don't have to have necessarily watched ECW to feel that this belt means something to Hook and Taz. So, I don't know. Like I said, I would have just I it's fine for a one off. I don't need like a parade of ECW guys coming in to wrestle Jungle Jack for the next two months. But I guess for a one off on on a TV, it's fine. And uh, hey, good for good for Rob for (laughs) even though we've been watching and we all know we've all seen we saw the WWE return run. We saw his like three different TNA runs. We all know he's washed. But, you know, he can still do the frog splash and he can still do the thumb pose. Uh, so he he get he'll get you still got a chance. Yeah, nice for uh, nice for Rob. Uh, don't know if Rob's a good guy or not. <laughs> <laughs> we, have, we have a lot of. Uh, conflicting data on whether or not Rob Van Dam's a good guy or not, but. Yeah. We saw Rob Van Dam wrestle Jerry Lynn in a nostalgia match at Bound for Glory in Philadelphia 12 years ago now. That's right. It was a nostalgia match 12 years ago, and these guys were the focus of a segment on Dynamite's 200th episode. It It does allow me to see more of my second favorite character behind... Roderick Strong, the the friendship cuck, which is of course bad boy Jack Perry. He's so mean. <laughs> He's a mean little boy. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> it, I, 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 I guess. I, I guess it's uh, just like it's such a it's such a WWE thing where they had this like very nice naturally likable kid who maybe wasn't ready to cut promos on his own, but they're like, Nope, we're breaking up the tag team and you're going baby face. And then it didn't work. And so he'd be off TV for a while. And then all of a sudden, Oh, all of a sudden his reactions aren't that strong. Well, guess we got to turn him heel. Like, it's just like, you didn't have, you didn't have to do any of that. <laughs> yes. Yes, there's a, there's a universe where the, the the Luchasaurus and the Jungle Boy are still the Jurassic Express, right? And they're getting they're wrestling in the opening match, and they're getting big pops every night. And everybody the end of time. Fun. Yes, there's nothing wrong. Not everyone has to <laughs> ascend the card, you know. <laughs> and hey, and like hey, and and you can main event as a tag team sometimes in AEW. So it's not like you're 
right you know you're 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 resigned to you know comedy comedy tag team stuff like you could still be a main eventer as a tag team just i don't know why we always feel like uh <laughs> why we always feel like we got to rush to do the breakup but we did and now now jungle jack perry is a mean little boy <laughs> He wears sunglasses. That's you right. know he's a bad guy. You know he's cool and he's a bad guy though. He wears says sunglasses. a lot of naughty words. Yep. Jericho. Oh boy. Tell you what, you like acting. <laughs> it's Chris Jericho feud. Jericho is uh apparently joined the Don Callis family, but we're not sh- entirely sure yet. Mm. And we don't know because there's st- there's a mandatory meeting of the Jericho Appreciation Society on next week's Dynamite as called for by the guy who is always screaming about his nipples. Right. <laughs> it's a big kid. Is, uh... <laughs> the big head. That's yeah. right. <laughs> Squarehead. Oh, Squarehead is uh he's serious now. All the all the JAS guy. Jake Hager and his hat, he's serious now. Everybody's deadly serious right now. <laughs> yes. Except except Don Callas, who's still doing shtick with uh, about Bad News Allen and got a portrait <laughs> painted of Bad News Allen in heaven <laughs> embracing Chris and uh, Chris and Don. Mm-hmm. A, yeah. Not a big fan of this uh, Chris Jericho. Look, hey, you know, Jericho wants to join Don Callas. That's fine. Jericho desperately needs to do something else. <laughs> yes. It's time to it's time for another fresh, uh, fresh paint of coat. On, on Jericho for sure if he's going to be around full time <laughs> um, so I just I just don't think similarly to by the time they broke up the inner circle um, I just don't think people care <laughs> and yeah. I don't think they've been I don't think the rest of the it's like Sammy and Danny Garcia and Jericho are on TV pretty much every week but who like nobody cares what Jake Hager or Anna Jay are doing in this group like <laughs> Like nobody, nobody cares about the rest of these guys. No one cares if they break up. Like, <laughs> right? I wouldn't say it's great for Takeshi to, to be in a group with Chris Jericho, though. Very few people in this company can say <laughs> that the association with Jericho has uh, has made them a bigger star. I would, uh, I would argue. Yeah. All right. Well, we've been going for a while here. We've talked about a lot. Is there anything else you like to talk? Oh, G one's still going on, by the way. <laughs> they haven't finished the blocks yet, so that's what's coming up next. The blocks will be finishing. The blocks will continue until morale improves. That's, that's the same joke I make every time. But yes. Um. Uh, anything else you want to get into? No, I think that about wraps it up. All right. Happy summer, Slam, everybody, and uh, until next time. I'm Ethan, and I'm Liam, and we'll be back soon with more stories from wrestling life. Bye bye. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. Now, here are this week's bonus features. Done it again. Waving to the fans. (laughs) Waving to the listeners. Thank you. Peace and love. Thank you. We've done it again. <laughs> Taking a bow. We're doing the end of the of the SNL special. We're all yes. we're all shaking hands and hugging. <laughs> yes. Uh, I like I like for us to clutch one another's wrists and do a dramatic <laughs> bow together. <laughs> a stage bow. That's right. Because we're we're performers after all. We're not <laughs> we're not television stars. We're performing for the stage. Yeah. Just, just, I've got Jack Flaherty fever. Jack Flaherty, Ace reporter from the Daily Star. <laughs> that is a real 1930s name, isn't it? There were a million Jack Flaherty's. <laughs> now there's probably just one. Yeah. Every carpet salesman and reporter and. Private detective was named Jack Flaherty back then, but now it's a bit more rare. Yeah. 
I try to keep on keeping on.